What up, y'all? It's your boy Paco, aka Perez Yahoo from the Rumble Room. Hey, uh, do you ever find it difficult to set aside time or energy to read the scriptures? How many like myself angst sometimes at the thought of having to read? How many wish there was an easier way to consume or take in the scriptures? Well, have you ever considered listening to the scriptures in audio format? As a nation, we were commanded by our creator to hear the law and not forsake his instruction. Let's get some precepts. All right, first we're going to go to Proverbs 1, 7 through 8. Okay, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. And go to Proverbs 6.20. As you can see, it says basically the same thing. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon, the, upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's Proverbs. That is Proverbs uh, 6. Oh my goodness, I lost my way. 620 through 23. Go to Proverbs chapter 3. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding. So shalt thou, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Okay. Let's go to Let's go to Deuteronomy 6. Actually, we'll hit Proverbs 28 first. <clears throat> we'll start at verse 4. They that forsake thy law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. Go to Deuteronomy next. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. <laughs> right at the top there, first line. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day 
shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them on the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Okay, so it resonates, sort of echoes the same thing that Solomon was writing. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. We'll start at verse 45. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words to Israel. And he said unto them, this is just after the song of Moses. Set your hearts unto the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall, which ye shall command your children, the, um, the, uh, the succeeding generations of Israelites, even those into the generation of the Messiah and, and his disciples. Which ye, shall, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law, all the words of this law. 47, for it is not a vain thing for you because it is your life. And through this thing, ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. Let's jump back to the uh, to the king, the Davidic king, not Solomon, but uh, but his father. Psalms one. <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth away in the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So it pays to study the law. Let's go to Psalm 19.7. <clears throat> right at the top there. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter than, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. <clears throat> let's uh let's go to Psalm 119. We'll read from 1 all the way to to verse 16. All right. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with whole heart. 
They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Verse 6. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect to all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Verse 8. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Verse 12, blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statute, statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways i will delight myself in thy statutes 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 <laughs> i will not forget thy word So how can we remain obedient while overcoming the challenge of time and energy limitations? As stated previously, we're commanded to hear, teach, and discuss the scriptures. Most of us typically get into the scriptures by reading them, or we may only get the opportunity to listen to, to certain choice passages through, say, a, a preferred teacher online. Reading the scriptures is a great way to get understanding, but we aren't always able to open the book and invest time to read for ourselves. Like when we're on the road heading to or and from work or, or if we're in line at the DMV or the grocery store. Well, why not listen to the scriptures in audio form? <clears throat> there are four areas of language literacy by which we acquire and communicate literary understanding. The first two are speaking and writing, and those are used to communicate underst understanding. <clears throat> so we'll focus more on the latter two, which are reading and listening. <clears throat> These are typically how we acquire understanding. In each of those four areas, any given group of individual any given any given group of individuals might have varied skill levels and preferences in, in each of them. For example, some people are better readers than they are listeners, and others are better listeners than they are readers. But as stated before, what do the readers do? When they're on their way to work or, say, cleaning up the living room or doing laundry. Perhaps our natural listeners, uh, our natural listening learners have already figured it out. <clears throat> One second. Listening to the scriptures in audio, audio form is... Uh, it's a great way to learn and consume the scriptures during those moments uh, when your hands are tied or involved in another activity. We listen to live streams and radio. Why not listen to the Bible in audio? You can easily find Bible books and audio on CDs, but you can also find them on streaming sites like YouTube. Let's check it out. Here's the book of Leviticus. Leviticus, the third book of Moses called Leviticus. Chapter 1. And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, 
Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the... So you can uh, listen to Leviticus. You, can, so, you know, if you find yourself needing to um, um, freshen up or get a refresher on uh, the intricacies of the Levitical law, you can just, you can type in Leviticus and bring that right up. Put your earphones in or whatever Bluetooth speakers or whatever Bluetooth in your car. You could just listen to the law. Let's try another book. As the sun rose over Los Angeles, California, on the morning of August 5th, 1962, were and the evening and the morning were the third day, and tree yielding fruit. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. Okay, so there's Genesis. Uh, and let's try another one. Let's uh, we'll just scroll back and see what happens. I think Exodus is back here. Came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and... Exodus chapter 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, uh, um, so that was just really to give you kind of a, a, a snippet of what kind of audio is available. Um, as you can see, the guy speaks very clearly. Um, <clears throat> he's, uh, you know, clear English. Uh, they got music in the background, so it really helps to kind of, kind of facilitates the listening. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, when you're on the way to work, to or from work or, you know, you can sort of uh, just kind of go through whatever book that you need. You know, it is, it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of, of reading and listening. One second, let's, uh, let's see, I will keep it at that. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> the pros and cons of reading and listening. Uh, they're great ways to, uh, to regularly uh, practice both. Um, reading and listening, they're, but they're both great ways to, to practice both. And, uh, and, uh, one is there's, there's not one that's more important than the other. Both, both should be regularly practiced in, and, um, you know, when, when you have a chance to read scriptures, um, read them when you have a chance to listen to scriptures, you know, so, <clears throat> but it's important to, to study in both, you know, and, and there's, there's, uh, different advantages, uh, that one form or modality of learning may have over the other, depending on the situation. Okay. And that's up for you to decide, but, uh, we'll go through some, um, some tips where, and we'll go through some, um, um, some ideas and, uh, um, pros and cons basically talking about um what's the advantages and disadvantages okay <clears throat> so reading gives us more control over the pace of our study okay we read the words when we want how we want and we can pause and and look up definitions um we can also take time to reflect on the meaning of words uh, or even particular verses and passages. And from those passages, we can take as much time as we want or need to consider and reflect on what uh, those, those scriptures or passages mean in the broader context of, say, that particular book or even other books of the Bible. These are advantages. These are advantages that are 
generally limited when only listening. When one listens, they also generally rely on their current vocabulary to understand the text, although listening with a dictionary or concordance can easily remedy this, this limitation. Eventually, as you check the meaning of certain words more and more, you might find yourself remembering them. Uh, of course, this is, a, this is a natural result of, of reading and listening. <clears throat> reading cons <clears throat> so these are the cons of readings these are some of the drawbacks that might uh, you know compare to listening Reading requires a considerable investment of attention and time. Sitting down, turning the pages, decoding the words. Unless it's a reading club or like a Bible study, one is typically required to separate themselves from groups in order to focus on the, the reading task. It's very difficult to read for deep understanding while keeping, uh, keeping an eye on the kids or or getting ready for work. See what I'm saying? Reading is cognitively taxing. Um, in other words, it demands much of the mind's resources. <clears throat> we don't we don't realize it, but because we practiced it during school, but it takes a lot of the mind's resources. One must decode the words on the page. Not only dec decode the words, but also compre comprehend each word's meaning. And so when we're talking about meaning, um, we're talking about various depths of understanding, right? One can read any given passage of scripture, say 50 times, and, and still have room to refine or deepen his or her understanding of of uh, what that particular passage means and also how it connects to the rest of the writings in the Bible. Listening pros. <clears throat> so these are the pros. These are the advantages of listening. Listening alleviates the job of decoding words ra and rather requires one to rely on their vocabulary to gain scriptural understanding. In other words, one must listen for understanding. Only listening, focusing on just listening on the audio format and not reading. This allows the reader to save energy save the energy that would have uh, gone into reading each word and use that energy more easily to more easily conceptualize and visualize that which is being heard from the audio scriptures. For me personally, I like to listen to the Bible in audio format when I go for walks with my dogs. I go for... I go for uh, one to two mile walks with my two pit bulls and they're older. So they, they like to stop every 10 feet and sniff like every inch of the block. Uh, sometimes it can feel like it can feel like we're out there forever. But when I put, say, one of the books of the prophets on play, you know, to listen to it. And it's like we're all we're all doing something worthwhile and it doesn't feel like I'm waiting on them to get back to the house and study the scriptures. <clears throat> it's also really cool to listen to the scriptures while uh, getting cardio in at the gym. Um, and this is cool because it, it kind of distracts from the stress of the workout. Psalms or Proverbs is, good for, is great for that. Uh, lastly, uh, I like to listen to the scriptures when, when I'm running errands. I know where I'm going. I got my to-do list written out and all my thoughts organized. Then I just push play on, say, Leviticus or Deuteronomy 
<clears throat> Deuteronomy and uh and I just get it done. So uh so if you guys are ever ever too busy or or just too drained from the day to read the scriptures, but you still, you know, want to get that that spiritual spiritual nourishment, just throw on your choice of biblical writings in audio format and let the reader and the audio do the work for you. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we'll just wrap it up from here. I hope this information was useful and edifying, and uh, I hope you guys have a great day. Paco signing out. Peace, light, and shalom.